So in the last video, I actually talked about adding Bluetooth to the Voyager with this little module right here. And it's actually worked out pretty good. So I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to dive into the old saddlebag here. I'm going to put out this little guy here. I just happened to have this old case around and it worked out good for the accessories and the unit itself. This is actually going to be my neat little Apple CarPlay here. And right now I have it hooked up to the phone, so let me fire this up. I should be able to do this right here on the bench. Of course, in a previous video, I talked about that little cable stay down there. So this will maybe be able to hook up, go through the cable stay, and plug right into here, which is a quick charge. The display showing the battery voltage, and quick charging for a couple of different USBs. So while I'm driving the bike, I can actually be running that, charging anything else I want. Of course, on another video I showed that I have a charging port inside the trunk itself. But today what I'm going to try to do, of course I have this hooked up to my phone, and I'll show that shortly here. And basically I'm going to set it so it talks to this Bluetooth, so that instead of using the speakers on this unit here, it'll go through the Bluetooth and use the speakers on the bike. So I have an input from either my phone or a Bluetooth enabled MP3 player going through here at the same time going through the module and out of the speakers on the actual uh, Voyager. So let's go ahead and get that set up. If I do that, there's the mount it came with. Actually kind of nice. Um, of course you would see a silver, it's kind of ugly too, an, uh, an ugly silver uh, nut and the rest of that screw and I just happen to have these little dress up caps here, and little rubber plugs and all that stuff to fully dress that up so even when the unit's not on there it's not an eyesore. Otherwise you just use this little guy right here and it clips on to the back of this and onto the bike. So more importantly right now I want to go ahead and get this thing fired up, plug it into the USB that's actually built into my bench top here and see if I can get this all set up so that the speaker will actually play through the speakers that are on the Voyager. Okay, so I have this right now paired and set to talk to my Apple CarPlay. So this is Bluetooth emission, meaning what it's sending out. And my particular unit is called the ZF365 and then it's connected. So basically whatever I have on here is going to go through the actual uh, Voyager now. So let me try something. So basically you get to this page here and you think, oh, how do I get to the Bluetooth? We go ahead and hit car home, which is right here. Here's your Bluetooth emission down there, SD cards, all that neat stuff, whatever you need. And like I said, I went ahead and paired it. So now, when I'm driving, I can listen to text messages, I can listen to anything from this unit directly over the speakers of the actual Voyager. And of course, right now it is hooked up to my phone. So I can get ways or maps right on here. And this is all touchscreen simple. So this is kind of a neat feature. I didn't think there was a way to have this unit talk to uh, the actual stereo that's on the bike. But with that little module I showed you guys. Right here. It'll basically take anything. It'll be an MP3 player or it'll be my iPhone talking through the aux onto the radio here. Sorry guys, I had to go ahead and shut that off. I don't want to run into any copyright stuff, but basically I was playing uh, this Smooth 95.3 and what all I need to do now is basically have um, my brand new Bluetooth uh, MP3 player so I can take all the songs that I have uh, right now um, on my computer and download them onto there where it's been kind of tough trying to get things on my phone and I want the phone to be separate and stuff anyway. So I can take this uh, throw it in the trunk and of course on another video you guys will see why I put a USB and a USB-C charging port inside the trunk itself. So I can basically throw this back there and I'll go ahead and plug it in and let it charge the whole time and be able to use this uh, Apple CarPlay head on the bike and uh, have my access to everything. At the same time I can have everything come through the speakers uh, on the bike itself including directions, all that neat stuff. So. I'm definitely pretty excited about this. Of course, I'm still messed up right now. 
Uh, everything's coming back slowly, and I'm still not fit to uh, ride a bike. Hell, I can't even drive a car right now because of my uh, condition after the accident, but it's getting there, and eventually I'll be back on it. So for now, I just wanted to show you guys how freaking cool this Apple CarPlay is. And this thing here, I think I paid about 150 for it. Um, actually, Santa Claus got it for me for Christmas, this past Christmas, so that's kind of cool. And uh, if for some reason I left it and somebody decided to go ahead and steal it or whatever, that's a lot better than, you know, a $1,000 iPhone. And at the same time, this is uh, shockproof, waterproof, all that neat stuff. And um, I don't know, it's just a great thing to have. I can't tell you guys enough how cool this is. Uh, unfortunately, it's not something I'll use all the time. I'll probably only have this up and running when I need to use the maps. Uh, otherwise, I can just have my MP3 player uh, that I just got Bluetooth going through the stereo and not have this up, uh, talking directly to the bike itself and not here. So that'll be kind of a neat thing. But uh, anyway, if you get one of these Apple CarPlays, like I said, I happen to get this one off of Amazon. Um, you can hook anything up to it to receive information and then to broadcast uh, through that, like I said, that little device that I have on the Voyager. So not sure if that helped, if I explained it enough, but if you have one of these, you can go ahead and experiment with it. It's really the coolest thing in the world for these bikes. And at the same time, you're not stuck having to look at something full time. Um, I get enough uh, touch screens on jets that I fly when I'm well, that is. And I really didn't want all that stuff permanently on my bike. I kind of like the retro look and the analog with just a little bit of digital on it, but I didn't want a touch screen. So uh, I hope that helps, guys. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you're able to get uh, set up similar to this. Um, this thing here, again, at the time was like 1995 is all. And it plugs directly into the adapter that I have without any other cumbersome stuff. Um, there is a, what is it called, VulcanTunes.com. They're going to be coming out with a module you can plug in directly to the radio. And that way you can change tracks and everything else directly through your controls here. But for now, this is my setup. So... Apple CarPlay was about 150 This little Bluetooth here was uh, 1999 And I think that Bluetooth MP3 player I got was about 34.95. So uh, that's kind of the setup I have. Anyway, uh, I'll go ahead and get this on YouTube just as quickly as I can. So you guys know what to do. Like, subscribe, hit that bell notification for future content. I appreciate you watching the video, and I look forward to talking to you folks again on another YouTube video.